Hi, I'm Johnny, Electrical Manager here at Consumer Energy Solutions. First off, congratulations on your new solar PV install. Today, I'm going to be taking you through the solar PV side of things, some key components, how your solar works, how to know if you're generating, and then any small minor troubleshooting issues that you might face. Now that you've had your new solar installation completed, I'm gonna take you through the basics of solar and how it works. The first and most important things are the panels. So the panels will either be mounted on your roof or on a ground mount system, a bucket somewhere on your property. So the panels will harvest the energy from the sun and that will be transported down your DC cable into your DC isolator and into the inverter itself. The inverter will convert the energy from DC into AC energy, which is what we use in our homes. This will be sent from the inverter through your generation meters and into your consumer unit. Once in your consumer unit, then it will go and disperse throughout the property, depending on what the needs are of your property. There's nothing that needs to be done because the brain of the system, the inverter, will take care of all of that for you. I'll take you through some of the key components to one of our solar PV installations, starting with the brain of the installation, the inverter. So these will come in many shapes and sizes, um, whether it be Solax, Solar Edge, Give Energy, or Fox. Some of the inverters will have a display screen and a user interface on them, where you can use to go through the system status, uh, any settings, or any troubleshooting or error logs that they might have on them. For those that don't have that system, you will have the according app set up so that you're able to monitor and check through that. Coming away from the inverter, we have a DC isolator. Not all systems require a DC isolator, so you may or may not have one of these. If you don't have one, don't worry. It's probably because your system does not require one through the manufacturer's installation guide. The DC isolator is the isolation point from the solar panels on the roof or your ground mount to the inverter. So if we were to turn this off, it would then cut any power going from the panels into the inverter itself. Next, we have our AC isolators. Now these will be situated both at the consumer unit and local to the inverter itself. If for any reason your consumer unit and inverter are local or close to each other, you may only have one of these installed. So the AC isolator will isolate any power from the grid side or your home consumer unit to the inverter and also any backflow from the inverter to your home. Next, we have the generation meter. So the generation meter is a small square box which is normally located close to your consumer unit. This will have a unique serial number and also will tell you your export and import from the inverter to your home and out. So if you look closely, you will have kilowatt hours in units and the blinking red light that we spoke about, which will show when you're generating or be solid red when you're not generating. So lastly, we have the consumer unit. So the consumer unit is the means of power for the inverter and from the inverter back to your home. Inside the consumer unit, you will find a breaker, in this case, a C20 MCB for the solar supply. There will be a sticker located also on it to advise that there is a dual supply when operating from the inverter and the panels on the roof, which will detail where to isolate the on-site generating unit and your main supply. Another key part of your installation is the schematics. So the schematics will be located local to the consumer unit and also to the inverter. In the instance that you have them local, there will just be one between the both of them. The schematics will outline the size of the installation for you, from your panel sizes to the panel amounts, the orientation, whether there's shading, and will also include the serial number of your inverter on there. On the schematics, there is also a startup and shutdown procedure um, in the event of a fault or should you need to turn on and off your solar supply. There's a couple of options I'm looking at when coming to see if your solar is generating as it should be. I'll take you through all of the options, but the first and easiest method of doing that is through your generation meter. Your generation meter will be blinking red whilst generating. The quicker that it blinks, the more you're generating. 
If this goes solid red, don't worry, it just means that you're not generating, so it could be a multitude of things, um, such as the sun has gone down, or if there's potentially any errors on the system that we need to look at. Another option of looking to see if you're generating is through your inverter. Now, this could either be situated in the loft, uh, in a storage cupboard, or external. If you have access to it, it's a really good means of checking your generation. So, if we were to go to the inverter, there's a couple of options that we can look at to make sure that you're generating correctly. If you were to click the back button, it'll light up the screen for you, which as we can see straight from the off, we are generating 1,459 watts, 1 1.4 kilowatts. You can click into the enter button here, go down to system status and PV one or two. This is one of our hybrid systems, so it will have two options. It'll generally always be PV1, or if you have two sets of strings, then it'll be PV2 also. But if you click in to PV1, there you'll be able to see V being the voltage of the panels, I being the ampage, and P being the power that's generated. So as we can see here, it's 1,469 watts. If there was a second string, you would then go down to PV2. This shows a zero, but if you had panels, it would show here. Now, if it was showing a zero, and you know that these panels are connected through your strings, then that will be something that we'll cross later on our troubleshooting video to see if there are any issues or any errors showing on your system. Another method of checking your generation is through the Solax Cloud app. When the install took place, our installers should have installed this Wi-Fi dongle, which allows your inverter and the brain of the system to connect to the Solax Cloud app. If you go onto the home screen, it will then show you exactly what you're generating in real time. When troubleshooting, one key component of troubleshooting is to ensure that all connections are sound and secure. At the inverter, there will be a multitude of connections depending on the inverter that you have. All inverters will have the DC string connection which are made via these MC4s here. What I'd like you to do is double check that they are securely in. They should make a click noise when they go in, and that will mean that they are as should be. Ensure that all DC connections are safe and secure. They should not move or be able to be tugged out. Now I'll take you through some troubleshooting tips um, on any errors that you might find that you have on your solar installation, and hopefully we'll be able to sort them here and now for you. So the first mode of looking for an error, if you think that your system isn't generating, is to go through the inverter settings and system status itself. If we click into the settings by the enter button and go down to history data, we will be able to go further down to error log, which will detail any errors that the inverter has picked up off the installation itself. Now, as you can see, we are showing an error here, but that is due to the battery not being connected at the moment. But this is one of the most common issues that we find um, is the grid volt fault, or IE03. A second one is the grid lost fault, which is IE02, which I will be able to take you through and diagnose these issues now and hope that we can get them sorted for you. As you can see from our inverter, it is showing a grid lost fault, IE02. To try and diagnose this, we will check through uh, a number of things. Firstly, the isolators to make sure that they are on and all the way back to the consumer unit to check that the relevant breaker or MCB is also on. So as you can see, our isolators are showing in the on position, but the generation meter is showing off. So I would go back to the consumer unit, locate the solar PV breaker, and turn that on. Turning that on should then initiate the generation meter, and also, which you might have heard behind me, the inverter start to kick back in. It will go through its check-in period, which could be 60 seconds to 30 seconds, but once this is counted down from 60 to zero, it should then kick in and operate as standard. As you can see here, it has finished the countdown and now the system is operating as normal. Again, if you were to go into system status, PV1, you will then see 
that we are generating 1,455 watts. Once looking through the error logs of your inverter system, if there are any codes which we haven't covered in this video, it's always good to refer back to the installation manual which was left by the engineer. On here, you will be able to go to the back of the troubleshooting and have a look at the most common faults that are found on the solar systems. If for any reason there are some that you are unable to complete, then you are always free to give us a call and one of our technicians will be sent out to try and rectify the problem as soon as we can. In the event of a grid vault fault, I'd like you to go to the inverter. I'd like you to access the system settings. The password for Solax inverters is 2014. Once entered, click through, go down to advanced settings and check the safety code. Your inverter should be set to G98-1 or G99-1. In this case, it is G98. Confirm that it is set to that. Go to grid parameters. Over voltage should be set to 262.6. Voltage two set to 173.7. That then should go back to the main menu, all the way back, and I'd like you to follow the startup and shutdown procedure. So to shut down the procedure, we would go AC isolator off, and then DC isolator off, ensuring all points of isolation are off. We let the inverter wait for a couple of minutes until it goes completely blank wait a further minute and then we will start up the inverter again which should clear the fault and save the settings that we just put through. As you can see the inverter is currently off, we've waited a minute and now we're going to boot it back up using the starter procedure which is outlined on your schematics which would be DC on first, both DC isolator and the isolator under the inverter itself. Once it powers up in the waiting mode we would then go and turn on the AC isolators, ensuring that all points of isolation at the consumer unit and isolators are in the on position. It will then start its check-in mode, and once completed, should resume normal operation. Once the check-in has been completed, the system should go into normal operation mode, as it has here, and you can further check by going into the system status, and it's showing all of the readings here to show that the panels are generating and the inverter is operating as standard. An issue you may face is the CT clamp error on our inverters. Not all inverters will have them, but the hybrid Solax do. The CT clamp cable is located at the bottom of the inverter. If you were to look underneath, it would say CT clamp. This cable will go all the way back to your mains cupboard or consumer unit and there will be a clamp around the cables which should be facing towards the grid so out of your house towards your main supply. Another common issue that you might face is if your inverter is stuck in waiting mode. If the inverter is stuck at waiting mode the first step to do is to check all isolators to ensure that they're on not forgetting about the one that is on the bottom of the inverter itself. Under the inverter, there is a rotatable DC isolator switch. Check that that is on. And also check that if you have one, your DC isolator is also turned on. As we can see here, this one is turned off. So rotate clockwise until you hear the click, which should then kick it in then the system will register that it's been turned on and we'll start the countdown check again. As you can see, the inverter has started the countdown check again. So after the 60 seconds is done, we'll check back and ensure that the inverter is running as it should. And there we go, the system is back up.
to normal system settings. So if we go back into system status, we will be able to see that the inverter is generating again and the system is acting as normal. Another issue that you may face is your wireless connectivity may go down. That could be through Solax updating their app or if you were to change your broadband provider or the router itself. You would need to do a Wi-Fi reconnectivity. There should have been a booklet left with you. There are also videos online on how to do this, but I will walk you through how to do this quickly and efficiently. First step would be to check that the dongle is securely fitted into the bottom of the inverter. Remove with a little wiggle and ensure that it goes back into the port that it's seated in with a firm push. That should it be set back in for you. You will then find in the Solax app the menu that takes you to connections where you can connect back to your home Wi-Fi. For a more comprehensive step-by-step, -step, please find in the description of this video the link for the Solax support page for Wi-Fi connections. Also, please be aware that not all installations will have a Wi-Fi dongle. This happens depending on your internet capability at your property.